Hi, what's up, bro? Today I'll be teaching you the basics on how to code projectiles through teaching you how to make a fireball, which is incredibly easy. And by the way, before we start the video, I just want to give a disclaimer. If I sound kind of tired on this video, it's because I've been hella busy lately with my projects plus New Year's and also I just woke up. <laughs> the life of a content creator, am I right? Anyways, let's get started. My projectile will be a fireball. However, for making any projectiles, you need to understand a couple of things. Number one, C frame. Number two, body velocity. And number three, the dot touched event of every part if you wanted to like damage any player however if you want the projectile to spawn and move when you press a certain key then you also need to understand remote events and input management and that's where we're gonna start so go ahead and insert a script into starter character and rename it to input manager that way you know what the scripts used for next go inside the script and you'll be needing first of all the user input service which is basically the thing that lets you detect each time a key has been pressed the way you get that is by putting game that gets service user input service inside a variable of course and after you do this then you're going to want to create a remote event which we will use to connect this local script with a server script later on you don't want to make the actual fireball script in a local script because then only one player would be able to see the firewall and be affected by it okay so create a folder inside replicated storage called firewall where you're going to store everything related to the firewall we're going to be making and now inside that folder insert this thing called remote event after you do that go back to the local script what we need to do now is find the remote event we just created through the script and for that you just gotta find the replicated storage service so you put game.get service replicated storage inside a variable and afterwards you gotta find the folder we just created in the replicated storage so you put replicated storage dot wait for child fireball inside another variable of course which will wait for the folder to spawn when anyone joins the game and finally we can get the remote event by putting fireball wait for child remote event inside another variable then we can finally start messing around with the input okay so we're gonna be accessing something from the user input service called input began which will let us detect every single time a player presses a key and also which key has been pressed that's what we want right for something to happen once we've pressed a certain key the way you do this is you type user input service input began connect function input game processed event and what's happening over here is every time a player presses any key it will connect that action to a function the first argument is going to give us what key has been pressed and the second is going to tell us if it was processed meaning if the player was typing or something since we don't want the player to fire the fireball while he's chatting you gotta do if not game processed event then and after that now we can finally specify for what key we want the fireball to work with in my case is f here's how you detect if the key pressed was the f key if input the key code double equal enum dot key code dot f then an important thing to note here if you want to use another key for the fireball or any projectile is the f that goes after enum.keycode if you change that to g for example then the fireball will fire when g is pressed and now the last thing we gotta do is connect this local script with an actual server script so that all players can see the fireball when we code it and that's why we have our remote event so you do fireball event colon fire server and this will let us connect the two scripts in a way basically what this does it sends a message to the game that can be collected by any server script basically saying that the f key has been pressed now we gotta create a server script in server script service name that fireball script and first we gotta get the remote event so we can just copy and paste these three lines of code of the previous script paste it over here and there you go now you have defined the remote event all right so the way we continue the other script over here is that you do fireball event dot on server event colon connect function plr which stands for player and what's happening here is that this script now pretty much has the ability to get the message of the local script and we're connecting the action of receiving that message to a function the first argument of these types of interactions meaning remote events from local script to server scripts is always the player who owned the local script so we have the player instance now we need to get the character of the player because you know the player and the character are two different things and for that you just have to do player the character inside of a variable now you type if character then with this what you're essentially saying is if the character of the player exists then something happens and now we're gonna find something called human or root part which is kind of like a torso that always stays in the same place in the character and the way you do that is by putting character colon find first child human or root part you could also use wait for child instead of find first child but i don't want the script to wait until an instance with that name exists so i just wanted to find it so i'll just keep it like this now you gotta do if human or root part then which means 
means if humanoid root power exists then something happens and now the interesting thing happens now we gotta take our firewall right and throw it but first we gotta position it so let's create a firewall real quick just make like a sphere so you don't waste a lot of time and this is my firewall it's not pretty but it gets the job done it's just an orange sphere with near material <laughs> you can insert the spheres over here by the way also you want the firewall part to be named firewall and make sure it's not anchored okay so you, what you want to do is you want to put this inside the firewall folder as well inside replicated storage so move this over here done and now we need to access the firewall in the script so under the if humanoid root part then do local firewall equals firewall folder colon wait for child firewall colon clone which will wait for an instance called firewall inside the firewall folder and then it will clone that instance why clone it because you only have one of these instances inside of the folder if you use that only instance then you won't have any left for a second firewall for example so each time the script runs it will clone the one in the folder so it never runs out of firewalls did that make sense hopefully it did now we need to put this firewall in front of your character so that it actually looks like a firewall spell or an attack right you gotta put it in front of your character before it starts moving so you do that by typing firewall.cframe equals human root part dot cframe times cframe dot new 0 comma 0 0.5 comma minus one and basically what's happening here is cframe is like a combination of position and orientation right so you're setting the cframe of the firewall which is the position and the orientation remember equal to the humanoid root part of the character and you're telling it to multiply that cframe by this which essentially just makes it go 0 0.5 studs up of where the humanoid root part is and one stud to the front i know it's negative so it shouldn't be front right but it's it's kind of confusing i know but you're just gonna have to deal with it that's just how it works also you're gonna want to parent the firewall to workspace by typing firewall.parent equal workspace the reason you want to do this is because when you clone something that new instance created meaning the clone right it won't really exist until you set a parent for it and now finally we're gonna use body velocity to push the firewall forward because that's what it is we will literally apply force to the firewall for it to move forward first we're gonna create an instance called body velocity and the way we do that is by writing local body velocity equals instance dot new body velocity this will give us a body velocity and we can access it through the variable body velocity then we set the max force which is literally the max amount of force that can be applied to the part on every axis meaning right left up down forwards or backwards and you do that by typing this body velocity dot max force equals vector 3 dot new and it has to be a vector 3 and i'm gonna put 10,000 on each you can later experiment with this but for the effect we're going for we're gonna need 10,000 on each obviously if any of this is set to zero no force will be applied to that axis so if the y meaning the second argument of the vector 3 is zero then the firewall would slowly fall while moving now we gotta set the direction and the way we do that is by doing body velocity the velocity equals humanoid root part dot c frame dot loop vector times 100 which is essentially saying whatever the humanoid root part is looking at which will almost always be the direction the character is looking at and now we gotta specify again what kind of how hard we want it to push the part this is very important as well if you don't do this then it won't work you can only change the number by the way and finally put the body velocity inside the firewall by printing it to the firewall like this body velocity dot parent equals firewall and that's all now we test and just like that we now have an ugly firewall that fires towards where the character is looking whenever we press our key in this case f of course you can make it look better if you want me to make a part two on how to make it like the one i'm showing on screen with vfx and everything just let me know and if this video gets enough support i'll make a part two also i have a discord server i'll be on every saturday night there on a voice call ready to help you or just chat with you it's the first link in the description so if you're interested in that then you know what to do this said that's all for today man keep leveling up be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace